Have you ever just wanted to take a picture and turn it into a 3D model? Well, now with Maker World's Image 2 3D model, you can do just that. I'm going to go through, show you how it works, show you what I did with it, and show you some of the features. And it actually costs credits on there. So you don't waste your time or your credits with, with what you're going to create. So Maker World's Maker Lab has a new image to 3D tool. You just take your, Im your image, you upload a single image. The AI generates the printable 3D model. It usually comes out as a OBJ file. That's what it did for me. You download it, you import it into your slicer, and you print. Now, when I did mine, it was a little different. It, it came in, it was, it was this turkey that I showed you guys earlier in, a, in another video. Came in with like 16 different colors because I guess the image that I had had that many colors in it. And that wasn't going to work for me. <clears throat> so it, it really works well for like busts, emblems, um, simple figurines, quick prototypes, things of that nature. So how does it actually work? So running the AI actually costs credits. So think of credits as the funds that you're going to spend each time that you generate a model. So where do these credits come from? Right. So there's two paths. Um, one, your account may let you fund your credits directly. And two, you can convert the um, you can convert or use Maker World points that you earn by being active, posting models, sharing prints, uh, engaging with the community, and all that. So the points are the reward currency, and credits are what the AI feature actually consumes. Some accounts may see a monthly run limit or promos that offer um, an effect cost per, per generation, but the bottom line is expect to spend a small number of credits per image. When I did this guy, it cost me two. If you're active, your points can offset the cost. And if you're new, you'll either earn points or top up on your credits and just fund that directly. So to walk you through actually how you do this. So you want to pick your you want to pick the right image. You want to make sure that it has high contrast, um, clean silhouette, um, like logos, icons, badges, a profile side shots. Those things all work great. If you need to remove the background, boost the contrast first. Think about it if you're uh, editing a photo and you know that you can get rid of the background easy, then that's gonna be a pretty good image to use. If it's gonna be difficult to get rid of some of those things, there's a lot going on, then it may not be the best image to use uh, to, to convert to a 3D image. So what you wanna do is take that image once you finally got it set to where you like it and then upload it here to Maker World. Once that's uploaded, you hit generate and then you'll spend some credits. Like I said, this little figurine cost me two. All right, so here we are in Maker World. What you want to do is go over here to Maker Lab. And then you want to scroll down and you'll see this image to 3D model. Go ahead and click on that. You want to drag and drop uh, whatever your image file is. Now, it's going to give you two different um, models to use to generate. You can see down here that I already have this turkey generated. Now, once you upload your... <laughs> your image, it's going to show you um, what it looks like textured versus what it looks like as a mesh. And you can you know, go around and check it all out. It looks really, really good. Just from a simple image that I did, that I found from a Google search. Okay, so let's talk about how the credits work quick. So the credits are right here. You can see I have 68 of them. Um, I've got 50 permanent ones. So those are, uh, I guess those are the ones that I had already built up that I hadn't used. And then monthly I get 18. So just spend your spend your credits wisely, but this is where this is where you can find them. And then, if you want to get credits, um, you can redeem your your Maker World points for Maker Lab credits. All right. So, a pro tip for you too is just pre-process your image. Do everything that you can beforehand. Remove the background, crank up the contrast a little bit. Um, if the surfaces look noisy, clean them up. You want to be able to to disseminate them from some of the lighter, smoother surfaces in the, in the background or things that you don't want to show up on your print. So once it's generated, all you do is download the OBJ file. You open your slicer and you import it. Go ahead and open Bamboo Studios and just go to a file, new project, call it whatever you want. And then um, you want to import, import the OBJ file. And then go find wherever um, you have your, uh, your download saved. So there's the OBJ file. I'm going to hit open. It's going to import everything. Now see with mine, that image that I uploaded had a lot of different colors, like I was saying. And this is where it's trying to color match all the different filaments that I have. So 
you know, I can, I can color match it to what I have, but I don't have all those. I've only got one AMS. I don't have like, you know, three or four, whatever it would take to make this guy. See all the different colors here. So when I bring him in, he looks pretty good, right? The model looks great, but you can see all the different shades of different colors. So that's why, like I said, I went in and I turned him all white. That way I can um, print him out and then I can color it in with markers later. And it's not going to take, you know, I think if I slice this right now, I think it's going to tell me that it's going to take four days to print this guy because of all the different colors. Here we go. So you see all the different color changes. So yeah, it's, it's telling me that it's going to take four days, 23 hours and 51 minutes to print this thing which is insane. And it's going to cost me $30 in filament to print this, a turkey that big. No, nah, no, nah, I'm good, bro. So even when I go in and I change the colors just to using four, it's telling me that it's going to take about a day and it's going to cost about $10, which, okay, I'm a little more, I'm a little more apt to do, but for this, uh, yeah, that's, that's a little crazy. But anyway, that's what it looks like when you bring it, actually bring it into Bamboo Studios and, and what you got to do with it there. Now, if like me, you wanted to go in and just make this guy one solid color, just make him all white, and then you can um, go and, you know, color it in yourself or do whatever. All you got to do is go over here to your filaments and just keep hitting the, the delete until you get down to the one, one color. As you can see, as I'm clicking on the delete key, there's a bunch going away. All right, so there's one and... I want to make sure that my devices are synced up and I can turn them white. Now what I can do is go in and hit the little paint icon. Before I do that, you want to make sure that you have more than one filament. You want to make sure that you have the filaments that you need. So let's just say that I wanted to use red for something. I could go in here and I could paint and just grab the circle, hit red. You do this, do the adjustments there. And then I can go in and I can start painting, you know, where I want, you know, the red to show up. It's monotonous, it's tedious, but you can do it. I will show you guys one tip when you're floating around here in, um, in space, if you're trying to zoom in on something and it's not lining up quite, quite right, the, the middle button where your scroll wheel is, if you have one on your mouse, you hold that down and that's going to let you drag the object through space. So say I was scrolling in and I wanted to see his eyeball. Well, I can't really zoom into his eyeball. Well, if I bring it in here, then I can kind of move around, move him around and see his eyeball. But that's a free tip that will really, that really helped me. So there are some things that it's good at, and there's some things that it's probably going to struggle with. Some of the strengths are going to be logos, badges, coins, signage, uh, simple, stylized silhouettes, um, simple figures, some, va some fast prototypes, but the limits are going to be things like, you know, very thin features, busy background, overlapping objects, expect to have to clean some of that up. So where do you want to spend your credits when generating these AI 3d models? So credits are cheap, right? Compared to your time. So I would spend the credits when I would need a client mock-up today, an event badge or a coin or icon, something that, um, I know that I could generate in a, another software. I just need to bring it in to make a 3d design of it. Um, or a design that I'll reuse like stickers, signs, giveaways, things like that, that I know that I'm going to reuse multiple times that I want to make sure are, are right. So when do you want to save the credits? Um, I save the credits when the image is extremely detailed or it's going to be messy. I'll drop that into Tinkercad or one of the other CAD softwares and I'll, I'll try to design it myself or, you know, I'll clean up whatever, whatever it gives me. You're going to still spend the credits. If it's something that you don't think that you can design on your own, then go ahead and get the initial design and clean it up in that CAD software. So let's be realistic about this, right? This, this is a shortcut. It's not a CAD replacement. It's not going to replace fusion blender or whatever CAD software that you use or whatever your workflow is for that. It's a shortcut for specific jobs. You want to use this to get a printable starting point fast, and then you can go back into your CAD software and refine things as your project demands. All right. So if you want my print prep checklist, let me know. I kind of have a little spreadsheet put together of things that I make sure that, you know, I hit and I do before I, even before I upload that photo. If you want that, go ahead and comment down below photo 3d 
and I will send it on over to you. Um, if you guys have tried this feature, tell me how many generations it took for you to get your first keeper. Mine was the first one. It worked really, really well. Um, if you guys have had issues with it, let me know that too. So go ahead and hit like if this saved you some time. Subscribe for more 3D prints and AI workflows. And I appreciate you guys checking out my videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one.